Well, good evening and welcome to worship. I'd invite you to rise for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we praise you, O God, for this circle of life that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent, as we light the candle on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit to be lighting, light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this as we wait for Christ our Lord whose coming is certain, 
and whose day draws near. Amen. I'd invite you to be seated. Well, good evening again, and welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. Welcome to those who are worshiping online, and for everyone here in person, thank you for making your reservation ahead of time at our website, aplc.org. It helps us to be able to keep everyone safe. Uh, Reservations for next weekend's worship will open on Monday of this week on our website. Speaking of keeping us safe, um, a big thank you to all of our worship support volunteers. We are um, the, the volunteers in the blue vests who welcomed you as, arri- as you arrived today um, are our worship support volunteers. They help us keep safe. They check reservations. They make sure that we're all seated um, in a way that's spaced out so we can have a safe worship experience together. We are in need of more volunteers so that we can keep worshiping together in a safe manner. If you are able and willing to help us out in this capacity. It is a critical ministry for our church so we can continue to gather during this pandemic time. And thank you to everyone who has been able to help us make this happen during this time. Uh, We have several musical events coming up. Our Christmas Handbells concert will be tomorrow, Sunday, December 6th at 4 o'clock p.m. And our Noel's at Noon concert series is ongoing for the next two Thursdays. In fact, this Thursday, the 10th, we'll feature Andrew Lloyd, who's an organ professor at the UT San Antonio. More information about these events can be found on our website. Um, As a reminder, our upcoming Christmas Eve services will be offered at five different times for you and your families. Our services are on the 24th at 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 o'clock that day. More information um, also available on our website. You can check out what's going on there. Um, And finally, We are supporting Transplants for Children's Christmas giving um, at this time. So uh, if you have a chance on your way out, you can see in the hallway along the sanctuary here, there's a bulletin board, and you can grab uh, a tag on your way out if you'd like to support us in that that great ministry that we're able to support um, children in need of transplants during the holiday season. Um, And now, let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. first reading is a reading from Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill may be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your, here is your God. See the Lord, of, Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. 
His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life.
The second reading is a reading from 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 8. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with, hef with fire, but in accordance with this promise, or with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, hello everyone. Um, so this week, uh, we're talking about this guy called John the Baptist. Now, a couple weeks ago, uh, we were talking about the sheep and the goats, and I had a picture of each, if anyone remembers that. Well, this guy, John the Baptist, he's out in the wilderness, and the, the gospel passage tells us he's wearing camel's hair. And I don't have a picture of a camel with me today, but does anyone, any kids or former kids in the audience know what a camel looks like? Olivia, what does a camel look like? That's right, that's right, exactly. Yeah, so they got the humps, right, and the big lips, big long legs, camels. Um, now, I don't have a picture of a camel with me, but I do happen to have this. This is a blanket that's made out of camel's hair that I got one time when I was in Central Asia. And um, you can feel it. It's not actually, it's pretty scratchy. It's not a very comfortable blanket. I mean, maybe I'll put it out in the narthex. Y'all can feel it on your way out today, but... But so John's out in the wilderness, he's wearing like scratchy camel hair, he's eating locusts and honey, and the reason he's out there is he's telling us to prepare the way for the Lord, to get ready for Jesus coming. Um, because this is Advent, right? This is our season of preparing for Jesus to come. And Jesus is coming at Christmas, right? When we celebrate how he came to earth as a baby in the manger. So let's rise now together for the singing of our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, just as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way, the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea was going out to him, and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist. And his diet was locusts and wild honey. And he was preaching, saying, After me one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to bend down and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. I'd invite you to be seated. Back in the summer of 2018, my army unit 
the 1st Cavalry Division Band, was tasked with supporting a field training exercise with the division headquarters. The culmination of this exercise was spending 11 days out in the wild cattle pastures of the Fort Hood training area, sleeping in tents and pulling security detail for the headquarters. No trombones required. It's funny how you learn things when you're suddenly dropped into a new environment. I learned some important lessons during the course of this field exercise out in the pasture. For example, how to unfurl concertina wire with minimal damage to self and uniform, which, if you're unfamiliar, just imagine giant slinkies covered in razors. Um, also learned how to quickly set up large tents with the company of uh, a large group of people. Um, other lessons learned include uh, that spending 20 hours of your day on a cot while you're not on shift doesn't do good things to your body. And also 95 degree Texas sun in June can make you sweat even when you're in the shade of your tent. I um, will also not forget staring at the lunch menu one day featuring beef sirloin as less than 100 meters away. The bearers of future beef sirloin were staring back at me. Now, my experiences in the pastures of Fort Hood can probably only loosely qualify as wilderness experience, geographically speaking, but it was on my mind as I mulled over the gospel this week as I wondered what we could learn from John's wilderness outside of Jerusalem. The wilderness features prominently in our gospel reading for today which is the opening passage of the book of Mark, a book in which we'll be spending a good amount of time over the coming year. Mark identifies that he's writing the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Assigning the title Christ to Jesus of Nazareth identifies him as the Messiah, as one who will bring deliverance. A bold statement to a people living in the context of Roman occupation he then connects the ministry of John the Baptist back to the Old Testament tradition by referencing the prophecy of Isaiah, which is actually a combination of texts from Isaiah and or the books of Exodus and Micah. Behold, I am sending my messenger before you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one calling out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. After this prophetic word, we are introduced to John, who just appears in the wilderness in Mark. The Jewish people to whom John appears are well acquainted with the wilderness. The Bible is full of stories of God's people spending time there. Abram and Sarai ventured out from Ur on the basis of God's promise. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years after being delivered from Pharaoh before entering Canaan. And the prophet Elijah escaped the wrath of Ahab and Jezebel by fleeing to the wilderness where God sustained him there by sending ravens with food. In fact, in Mark's gospel, John the Baptist is portrayed on some level as being linked to the prophet Isaiah by the description of his clothing, the leather belt, and the camel's hair. All this talk of the wilderness in this passage made me wonder if we shouldn't just spend some time there today. So let me invite you out into the wilderness. Let's take a walk. We can leave behind the walls and gates and pools of Jerusalem and walk for several miles down a dirt road through the arid Mediterranean countryside, not all that different from central Texas hill country. We can eventually ditch the well-trodden road and stray out into the rocky natural landscape full of gray saline mudstone, thorn scrubs and tamarish. And since it was a long walk, how about let's just sit on some rocks here, kick off our sandals. Maybe we can set up camp here tonight and in the morning our guide, John, can show us some of his tricks for living off the land. Not too far from here, is the Jordan River, a familiar place out here in the wild with which we're well acquainted. There is a history with the Jordan River. Abram's nephew Lot settled here a long time ago after they parted ways. It's also where the Israelites crossed into the Promised Land 
after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. It can be comforting to realize that even out in the wilderness, there are landmarks that remind us of where we have been before. Holy rivers that have seen misguided homesteads, ceremonial crossings, dreadful battles, miraculous healings that continue to point us back to God's promises and faithfulness over the course of generations. After we get some water from the river, we might look for something to eat. John beckons to a basket in the corner full of something dry roasted and salted. With a slight smile, he mentions that he realizes they don't look very appetizing and honestly, they don't taste great. But he promises that locusts are in fact a great source of protein. And um, indeed, sometimes in the wilderness, the things that sustain us aren't what we would pick off of a menu. Manna that has a quick expiration date, quail that appears from the sea, bread and meat delivered by ravens, and yes, even locusts. Nourishment, which ultimately sustains us and brings us life in the midst of whatever our wilderness is. Thankfully, John also has a surprise for us. He points over into the distance, and initially it seems like he's just pointing at the horizon until he explains that he's pointing at the dead tree which turns out to be much more than meets the eye, John reveals inside a treasure chest filled with the sweetest, richest, nutritious goodness. Honey produced by the labor of a small empire of bees and their precious cargo of nectar delivered painstakingly day after day from every corner of their miniature kingdom. Suddenly, we notice that the landscape is also dotted with wildflowers, small enough that they're initially lost in the largeness of the wild floodplain. Yet when you start looking for them, you notice what the bees already know. The land is sparkling with wildflowers of every shape and hue, gold, magenta, brilliant purple, scarlet. As we thank John for his hospitality, it strikes me that this likely isn't your first visit to the wilderness. I wonder what wildernesses you have visited before. What are the times and places where you have felt yourself in the wilds, waiting for the deliverance from one who is mightier than you? For many, 2020 has been a year spent outside the gates of Jerusalem. And yet, I imagine that whatever wilds you have experienced during this year of pandemic and upheaval is likely not your first sojourn there. I know that I've experienced life in the wilderness on more than one occasion. The unfamiliar terrain of career uncertainty, the mountains of starting over in a new place, the canyons of life in the closet. Life can be full of wildernesses, times of waiting waiting for the promised land, waiting for deliverance from Roman occupation, waiting for a Messiah, waiting for a vaccine, waiting for an acceptance letter, for Christmas break, for life to get back to normal. John just appears in the wilderness. And sometimes it seems like we suddenly and unexpectedly find ourselves in the wilderness too. Whatever that wilderness might be for you. I wonder if there are any landmarks, any sacred rivers to remind us of God's faithfulness. What sources of nourishment are we being provided with, even locusts that don't seem too appetizing? What sources of unexpected joy are present around us that we might miss if we're not looking for them? The honey and wildflowers of life all around us. John just appears in the wilderness, and he is waiting for the coming of Christ, but it isn't a passive waiting. John's waiting involves gathering together at familiar waters, practicing repentance, and becoming familiar with the gifts of the wilderness. You see, John knows that one is coming, a mighty one, and one who will also spend some time in the wilderness with the wild beasts and the angels one who will know what it means to sit on rocks and wait, who will know temptation and hunger and loneliness, one who will feed great crowds of people in the wilderness with just a few loaves and some fish, 
one who will be betrayed by his friends and crucified out in the hills to show us that God comes to us in the wilderness and waiting of this world. Amen. Let us boldly confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and you breathe the life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are missing the joy in this holiday season. We ask your gracious mercy and love to surround all who are lost, all who grieve, all who are broken, all who are ill, and all who call out for you in their time of need. Remember those names on our hearts this evening we may now choose to say silently or out loud. Wes, Pam, Carly. Give new life to all who are overwhelmed. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. With love and thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in you, especially our sister in Christ, Lorraine Leibel, and our brother in Christ, Pastor Dick Brendel. Give us certainty to trust the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. May peace be with you. As we prepare the way of the Lord this Advent, we remember that Christ is coming even in the midst of the wilderness. We understand that this has been a tough year for many. As you consider your offerings, we hope you'll keep an eye out for the unexpected lessons of the wilderness and know that your giving helps us to sustain this place to gather together at familiar waters and recall God's faithfulness to us. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. As you are able, would you please rise? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is made ready and all are welcome to taste and see that the Lord is good. At this time, you're invited to take the wafer out of the bag and place it in your hand as we commune together. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.